Good evening, everyone, and welcome to A Night at the Opera. Forgive our little interlude here in terms of our warming up and getting ready, um, but we're ready for you now. We want to thank you very much for spending your first evening of the Friday evening of the summer with us for Covet's Night at the Opera. And one of the things we would love for you to do is to imagine that you're getting ready to go to the opera this evening. Think about your favorite opera that you'd like to see. Think about what jewels and fashion you're getting ready to wear. Perhaps you're pouring yourself a drink and relaxing. And what we're going to do is we're going to invite you in the world of our jewelry experts and fashion experts, and they're gonna help you put together your look for your night at the opera. And with that, I'm your host this evening. My name is Cynthia Morrow. I'm the founder and CEO of Covet. And Covet was basically an idea that came out of the love of jewelry. So my co-founders and I love jewelry. We wanted to have more jewelry. And we thought, what better way to have more jewelry than to share it? And so that's how Covet was born. And tonight is all about sharing jewelry. And we're going to introduce some incredible jewelry for you to see this evening. And we are coming to you from Bentley and Skinner. As you can see in the background, this is, for most people in London, this is a jewelry destination and perhaps famous throughout the world for their magnificent jewels that you would find in this beautiful, beautiful jewelry destination, I like to call it. And some of these magnificent gems we're going to show with you to show to you tonight. And we hope you're really going to enjoy them. But we again, we want you to think about which ones would you choose to wear to the opera because we are going to ask you, what is your favorite collection? Now, our program this evening is five acts and an encore. And the reason it's an encore is because we're actually going to say, for anyone who would like to leave at the end of the, the five acts, that's fantastic. But afterwards, we're going to pop the bubbly, invite our, our attendees to join us for a Q&A. And also, if you're dressed up in your opera attire, which some of you have told me you are, then we would love to see what you're wearing. Okay, in terms of our overture, how should we start? How about a little opera insight? What would be a key accessory one would need to take to the opera besides your fantastic outfit? And that would be your binoculars. So in the 18th and 19th century, when opera became very popular because there was a growing middle and class and wealthy folks who wanted to go to the opera and you know, they wanted to go and not just see the show and watch the performance, but they wanted to see the people in the audience. So binoculars were the key accessory because you wanted to see and be seen. So tonight, in that, in that respect, let us think about how we can um, think about being seen at the opera. And we're gonna go move on now to talk about the chat. So the chat is live and we have Nesta Padbury, who's Covet's Director of Operations. She's one of our leadership team and she's going to be managing the chat. And so please feel free to ask any questions on the chat. And like we said, we'll also open it up for Q&A for those who want to stay after um, for the encore and the bubbly. Okay, so now where we're going is we're going to look at the exquisite jewels. And Omar Baha, who is from Bentley and Skinner, who we're going to introduce shortly, and Elsa Navarrete from Covet, a co-founder and gem specialist, are going to take us through seven collections they have put together for this event. And you're just going to be amazed by the jewelry you're going to see here this evening. 
So without further ado, I'm going to ask Omar Vaha to join me here. Hello, Hello. Omar. Good evening, Esther. Good evening, all. How are you? Very well indeed, and I hope you are too. I am. Thank you for having us. Not at all. It's a pleasure. And tell us, how long have you been at Bentley and Skinner? I've been uh, here 26 years. 26 years. That's amazing. And you love your job, obviously. Oh, absolutely indeed. Yes. And what's your favorite part about being at Bentley and Skinner? I've been surrounded by uh, beautiful gems. You know, uh -huh. I, I like things that are objects of beauty, things that sparkle, things that give joy. And what better place to be than Bentley and Skinner? I worked for a bank before, and I switched careers. Counting money was rather dull. But looking at jewels, and playing with them, selling them, making somebody feel glamorous, giving them joy and happiness. This is what I know about. You gave me joy and happiness today when you put all these beautiful diamonds on top of me. Oh. I love them. You they wear them. Gorgeous. You're natural. <laughs> okay. So what we'd like to do now is we're going to move on to the next piece, which is the first piece you were going to share with our, our audience today. Yes, this the is the first of the collection. And tell us a little bit about this. This is a suite from the 1800s. It's gold and topaz. I love this color combination because here the color of the gold is very, very rich. And the topaz have got this wonderful, gentle, uh, pink quality about them. And the two the marriage of the two, I think, is just simply exquisite. It really and, is. Uh, this is something that I would actually envisage the Countess from Capriccio to be wearing in the final act. Oh, I love you it. Know, if we can take it near the camera so our audience can have a closer look at it. But uh, it's a stunning piece of uh, jewelry. We have the earrings there, we have bracelets, the brooch, and the necklace. And just imagine a lovely, soft, shimmering gown and you're adorned with this, perfect. It's amazing. And mm. when did you say this faded back to this is, this, this is from the late, eight, uh, late 1700s, early 1800s. Wow, that's, that's just fantastic. It's a beautiful, beautiful set. Yeah. So the nice thing of, uh, is, is, is the, the craftsmanship as well. Yes, yes. And if we are thinking of, uh, think of musicality, and I think it has musicality as well. I definitely agree, and I really didn't know that there are such things as pink topaz. Oh, the topaz comes in various mm -hmm. colors. Later on, you'll actually will see some uh, imperial topaz, which I think uh, Sasha's wearing Mon a wonderful oh, Sasha, yes, necklace, yes. Uh, which is imperial um, topaz. And um, so, yes, come in various colors. We also have blue topaz as well. I knew that. Yeah, yes. indeed. Now we're going to move over to Elsa's first collection. And Elsa, you are going to talk to us about sapphires and diamonds. Hello. <laughs> well, this collection was built exactly around this gorgeous Art Deco blue sapphire and diamond bracelet. This is just such an exquisite piece. If I can um, draw your attention to those beautiful sugar loaf, um, unheated blue sapphires, those alone are about 20 carats in, um, together. And they're surrounded with old diamond cuts and caliber cut blue sapphires. So that's an additional 24 carats that you're carrying on your, on your wrist. And all this is set in platinum. What I love about that one is that the clasp is hidden. So even if it turns around on your wrist, it's just showing gorgeous diamonds and sapphires all around. Yes. And um, well, given that Bentley and Skinner have such gorgeous jewelry, it was really hard to make choices of what to pair it with. So I, I chose two things. And um, actually, that's one of the things I love about Covet, that you don't have to settle for one, you can have several. So our first choice was um, is this lovely um, butterfly earrings. And there are by this Russian um, jeweler. Russian jeweler, Iglis. Iglis, yeah. And, and Bentley and Skinner have a fabulous collection. And it's the butterflies are enamel, enamel, and they're just as gorgeous in the back as they're in the front. 
really and they have are. beautiful strength of little diamonds and blue sapphires that just sparkle on your neck with any breeze movement of your head. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, sweet piece that I thought it would be perfect for Madame Butterfly. <laughs> now, if you're not so much into the buttery, butterfly, flowery thing, I chose these sleek, gorgeous, gorgeous sapphire um, long earrings. Now, the sapphires are cut in a rondelle um, shape, and it, they're really faceted, so they give a lot of shine. And on top of that, they're sandwiched in between diamonds. So you have sparkle all the way around. And it's a more modern, sleek look. And I was telling Cindy that I would wear those for lunch. <laughs> and they would easily carry over to uh, an evening look. So you, you can't lose with either one of these um, looks on, on the Sapphire's choices. So now we're back with Omar. Omar, and Omar now is going to talk to us about the Pearl and Diamond Collection he put together. Well, the Pearl and Diamond Collection, I think is a very classic collection. We have the King of the Gemstone, the Diamond, and Queen, the Pearl. And together the marriage of the two is just simply beautiful, elegant, gentle, sophisticated and the nice thing here is that the lady doesn't actually have to worry about the color of her gown no matter what the color of the gown is the pearl diamond combination is going to look absolutely stunning and here i have a tiara which i think something that tosca would have enjoyed this is a victorian tiara made with natural pearl and diamonds and also converts into a necklace uh, wow talk about versatility and, and talk about having more. I also have a beautiful neck, uh, bracelet here, which is from the turn of the century, moving on to Art Deco. Again, the pearls are natural. We have baguette and round brilliant cut diamonds here. Very light setting, elegant, and very easy to wear. I think a lot of the jewelry that we've actually chosen this evening is something that the lady can actually wear with a modern dress of today and actually enjoy and not be too overdressed. You know, the important thing is the whole ensemble has to work, the dress has to work, the jewel has to work. Most important, the lady is the most important gem of all and she needs to feel right in all. We have this beautiful Edwardian pendant. One of the things that I love about this particular piece is the setting here. Notice the beautiful cover set diamonds before and the natural pearl suspended from it. And the luster that you get from that pearl is just absolutely beautiful. It's just so lovely, uh, rich and gentle with wonderful light coming from within. It's really true. You can't um, really see it on the camera the no, way you but, can you see know, it all you when need you come is visit a very the shop. Simple strapless dress here mm -hmm. and this will just speak and Finally. not to forget the earrings we have stunning okay. natural pearl and diamond earrings here again from the 1920s very simple easy to wear elegant and that the drop is a nice drop it's not too long so if one wanted to wear this at royal ascot for instance you could do that and not feel overdressed Stunning. Just perfect. What a great choice, Omar. Thank you. And moving on to pearls now, we're going to then hear from Elsa about amethyst and diamonds. Okay, so um, full disclosure, amethyst purple is my favorite color, so I might be a little bit biased on this, but in my defense, in all ancient civilizations, they believed amethyst is synonymous to luxury. So I'm not going to argue with that. So I chose this beautiful um, late Victorian amethyst and diamond riviere. And if you're wondering why I'm saying riviere instead of necklace, riviere is just a term of, um, that describes a necklace that is comprised of gemstones of the same species that are either all the same size or that they are uh, gradually getting a little bit smaller. But anyway, so we have this Riviere with this five additional 
gorgeous amethyst drops that are topped with um, rose cut diamonds. And they come with uh, their matching earrings, which I just, oh, I'm just really in love with this, um, with this piece. But I also want to um, draw your attention. Oh, by the way, this necklace is from 1880. Okay. <laughs> so being able to wear that piece is just, uh, I, would, I would just think it's such a privilege. And now I want to draw your attention to this beautiful, sweet, lovely um, amethyst ring. The color on those amethyst stones is just gorgeous. It's just deep and rich. And it, it is also a late Victorian piece. And um, these types of rings were given to, um, as engagement rings or as wedding rings. The two hearts together means that those hearts are bound together. And if you add the little crown on top, it means that, um, there's reigning of fidelity over the marriage. So it's, it was just really interesting finding the little symbols hidden in Victorian um, jewelry. And it's, this is gorgeous. You can just wear this. If you don't want to go with black, I would definitely recommend a white gown, a light silver gown or gray to make that amethyst pop. Absolutely, and walking in the gardens as well, Esther, in uh, somewhere like the Grange or Blind Boom with the sweet peas are out. It will look absolutely stunning. A good choice there. I, I love amethyst too. What an image you've conjured up there. Sounds perfect. Thank you, Elsa. Another fantastic choice. I mean, it's really going to be hard for people to choose what their favorite is. But now we're going to move on to, you know, the king of gemstones, really. And that would be our emeralds. Oh, the emeralds. They're, um, well, what can we say about the emeralds? But just beautiful, lovely, rich green color. But it's one of my favorite gemstones because I think Absolutely. green is such a soothing color. And here in this Edwardian pendant, we have a beautiful, untreated Colombian emerald. And it came from the Musa mines, where a lot of the very fine emeralds came from and is surrounded by diamonds and calibre cut emeralds, very simply mounted. So when it's actually on the neck, all you will see is the beautiful shimmer of the diamonds and the brightness of the emeralds. The chain just practically disappears. Mm. And it looks magnificent when it's up next to the skin. You know, jewellery has to be worn in order to give life to it. Sort of looking at it purely on display or in a bust, it doesn't sort of seem to do any justice. So. What I would suggest you ladies out there, pop into Bedouin Skinner and come and try them on. You know, <laughs> so life will true. get a bit easier. You know, we're, we're currently working under strange times, but when things are a bit more uh, freer, please come and try the jewelry on and you'll see, and you'll feel different. To match that, we have this, well, you chose the bracelet. <laughs> you chose the bracelet. I, had, I asked Omar, as I was leaving the shop one day after we were going through the collections, I happened to spot this bracelet in the window, and I said that has to be in the Emerald and Diamond collection. Yes, Have you ever seen anything as stunning as this bracelet? Tell yes. us about it, Omar. This is a beautiful Art Deco um, Emerald and Diamond bracelet. Again, the emeralds are Colombian emeralds, so really have this wonderful clear quality about them. What you'll see about emeralds is that it's one of the gemstones that often has quite a lot of inclusions in them. In order to find emeralds which have very few inclusions in them, you, you can actually see into what I would call a pool of clear green water with an even depth of color. And this particular piece is just magnificent in this collection of emeralds. They're beautifully matched. And we also have just the right amount of diamonds in there, which doesn't take away from the beauty of the emeralds. I've never seen anything quite like it. it took my and breath away. We need something for the finger too. So here we, we have a beautiful Art Deco ring. Uh, again, a Colombian emerald surrounded by diamonds. Um, one thing here to note for is that the setting is very, very fine. There isn't a lot of metal around, so your eyes, again, are very much focusing on the gemstones themselves. Uh, it's when the ring is actually on the finger, you'll notice how beautifully it sits, nice and 
easy to wear, it's not too proud, because emeralds are quite soft compared with rubies, sapphires, and diamonds. So you need to make sure that the setting that they're in are quite well protected, especially in a ring, because yes. you'll be knocking out of things and you can easily scratch them or drop things. I totally agree. I mean, this really does protect this gorgeous stone, and it is a gorgeous stone. And then we move on to the earrings again. What can I say again uh, about these? Pay particular attention to the setting. You'll see, again, there's hardly any metal there. The diamonds are just simply framing those beautiful pear-shaped emeralds. The emeralds themselves, again, are Colombian, and you notice the rich depth of color. They're not too long, again, so very easy to wear. You're not limited mm. to after six in the evening. If one wanted to wear this for a smart lunch, you could wear this for smart lunch too. And here, this particular emerald collection, I can actually see the Marshallin and uh, De Rose and Cavalier wearing this. Um, you know, for their conjure up elegance, sophistication, and beauty. Very well said. And, and again, as Omar was saying, when you come into the shop and you actually see these beautiful pieces in person, they will take your breath away. The, the stones are exceptional. And they all have their certificates, and so you can see where they came oh, from absolutely. and that they are Colombian emeralds. Mm -hmm. And every single piece, the green color, because they're all Colombian, they match each other. So it's a beautiful collection. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for letting me have the bracelet. <laughs> and now back to you, Elsa, as we move on to I believe we're doing the Topaz collection, are we not? Yes, correct. And I, I believe, um, well, this this one is one of my um, also favorites. I think they're all my favorites. <laughs> okay, so let's start out with the ring. This is an amazing Victorian Topaz and diamond cluster ring. The main stone is 13 carats and it's surrounded by old diamond cuts. And I really love these little diamonds. Um, if, you, if you notice in the picture, some are a tiny little bit, well, you can't tell in, in Monica's gorgeous hand. Look at that ring. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, the setting, um, it's just so particular. I love it when, when the diamonds are, are sitting just a little bit off because it makes me think of the hard work. It makes me imagine a person setting every little diamond there lovingly. And it's just such a special piece because you can tell it was handmade with so much love and it looks gorgeous. It's a stunning piece. Um, oh, gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I pair that with your lovely earring. And these are two really elegant, as you can tell, um, drop shaped topaz. And those are suspended from two graduated diamonds round brilliant cuts. Oh, they look really lovely, really lovely. And, and to finish, well, not finish, because I see you've got more stuff on, <laughs> is this the bracelet. Oh, well, let's see. Let, yeah, that's an, that's an extra. <laughs> yes, we, we have a beautiful chain. Oh. I decided to add a gold chain to the back of Monica's dress, just for the fun <laughs> of it, because the dress is so beautiful. Okay, the and, the, <laughs> yes. and that is just a gorgeous, is, is that the pink gold? I can't tell because of the coloring. Gold, it's is the gold. It, okay, well, this piece is just a very, you know, bold piece that even though you already have other jewelry, it just speaks on its own and it blends really well. It's just, it's a piece that it's modern, it makes a statement. And how heavy is it, Monica? It's quite heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's very it, nice. It reminds me of an Amazon bracelet, which, you know, it's wonderful for all us women being empowered with our jewelry. So this is the golden look in our golden girl, Monica. Uh, thank you so much for presenting it. <laughs> thank you. That was Monica, everybody. And finally, we're going to cap our jewel week collection off with the diamond collection, of which I have the, the joy of wearing. Absolutely. You know, here we have such a beautiful, elegant 
simple gown, but what a wonderful backdrop to see diamonds. We have a diamond Riviera necklace, very, very classic. Have a set um, diamond earrings, a beautiful bank clip and marble ring, and a diamond line bracelet. And piece de resistance is this brooch here, the floral brooch, which just looks magnificent. In a we have this dress, really we have a dress <laughs> which speaks for itself. We have a lady that speaks for herself, and we've got the jewels that actually look after themselves. You know, this is a very classic look. Uh, and, and has very timeless quality about her. It really does. And, you know, these are such substantially, substantial diamond pieces. Um, the bracelet and the necklace. And yet, you know, you can add this incredible brooch and still not have it feel like it's too much. And of course, who doesn't want to wear a Van Cleef and Arpel's beautiful diamond ring? So Omar put this together particularly for me, because I happen to love diamonds so very much. So I'll be excited to see how many other people um, say the diamond collection is your favorite. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick poll so you can tell us which look you would pick to wear to your favorite opera. And so we'll take one second. I think that poll is coming up. It is. And so the question lists all the different seven collections in order. The gold and pink topaz that Omar showed us. And then we saw the blue sapphire enamel and diamonds. Then we saw the pearl and diamond collection, the amethyst and diamond collection. Of course, the emerald and diamonds, the golden diamond, and then the diamond collection, which I'm wearing. So take a moment, if you will, and vote. The votes are coming in fast and furious, and we're all very excited to see which is going to be the favorite collection of the evening. And do you want to share the results? Are we ready to share? Oh, can't wait. <laughs> Maybe we're not ready to share the results. Maybe you, you can just tell us the results. Oh, Ooh, I can see. So the number one, it looks like, is the Emerald. The oh, Emerald and Diamond Collection. 46%. How wow. amazing. Omar, well done. I think it was the, was it the bracelet that sent it over the top? To well, you? I think uh, it, it, this, the, the, this is the collection that, was a team effort, you it know, really we, was, it's true. We, we all put this together and I remember showing this first yeah, time round and, yeah. and she just absolutely loved and was mesmerized by uh, the pendant because it's just so beautiful. But as she said, there was something very soothing about the color as well. And again, gown, uh, emeralds are quite easy. They are easy. They're, they're, they are easy and um, they look great. And nice thing is, they're all quite modest pieces that are easy to wear, you know, they're not over the top. I agree. And I think actually everything that was picked, um, there was nothing that was really over the top. I think everyone will agree with. They're all just amazing collections in and of themselves. No, but the nice thing is that it's lovely to have jewels that one can actually wear or enjoy rather than being tucked away in a safe and coming out once a year, perhaps. What's the point of having something that's going to stay asleep? Exactly. And that's that's one of the reasons why we love Covet so much and why Bentley and Skinner has collaborated with Covet because we want people to be able to enjoy these jewels every month through a shared ownership program if that's how they choose to own them. And then they're not locked away in a safe. No, they're out, they're about, they're being worn and enjoyed and loved. Yeah, during the lockdown, you know, one of the great joys that I had you know, I have a collection of pins and uh, rings. I took each a different one out on a daily basis, looked at it and put it on, and it actually made me feel cheerful and bright rather than, oh my God, you know, the world is coming to an end, this is so boring. And I dressed for myself. <laughs> I know. And it picked my spirits up, you know, I didn't need to hit the gym bottle. 
So right. Joel stood it for me. No, I'm fine yeah. with you. And, and so, you know, we didn't do any men's jewelry today, but one of the things you see is Omar has this beautiful diamond owl lapel yeah. pin. Yeah, this is a 1920s pin. Uh, Paris had diamonds, uh, and he's sitting on an onyx branch, and it's just uh, wonderful, and it, it's uh, keeping an eye on me to make sure I, that I am wise. And I, I love that. Too I love yeah. that. I think everyone could use it. Yeah, because I, because I can be a bit impatient, and I'm this piece can be controlled. <laughs> did, Mark, did Mark Evans give that to you? No. <laughs> Mark, is, Mark is the director here. I thought maybe he was trying uh, to. No, no I, I, I have built up quite a collection. For myself, but some cute. some have been gifts, uh, uh, and the others are things that I've actually seen and felt must have it. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a little greedy. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think you know one of the great things about again um, having men's jewelry as well is you can share that as well. And so um, I think our next show we might do some pieces of men's jewelry. And I think now we're going to move on to fashion. So we've seen the collection, you've selected your favorite, and now it's time to really look at how we bring that look together with our evening wear. And what we're going to be doing, I'm waiting for the, the designer fashion. I'm gonna tell you another opera insight. Now, this beautiful cloak you see here is a piece that's in the v &A. And um, if you go on your website, you can learn all about it. And you'll see that, you know, back in the day when people were going to the opera in these beautiful gowns and they were quite large, a cloak was perfect for both a man and a woman. And this cloak here was brought to us by Liberty of London. It was made by them. It's fur, it's velvet, and it's a metallic silk. It's just stunning. And so if you'd like to see a better view of it, you can go to the v &A website. And hopefully when the VNA opens again, you'll be able to go see that in person.